Okay, the mass professor is on the air again. And we'll start with the thrilling, absolutely thrilling, dialing of the Zoom number. This gives you an idea of the loyalty of my students, that neither my in-person student nor my, um, uh, nor my uh, Zoom student is uh, here ready to go right at the moment. So, damn it, they're going to have to catch up later. Today we're going to talk about chapter 14 uh, from our famous book, uh, Automation Production Systems and Computer Integrated Manufacturing. And chapter 14 is on single station manufacturing cells. Pardon me one moment while I douse some light. All right. And we'll talk about single station man cells, single station automated cells, applications of single station cells, and analysis of single station cells. Uh, this is how they divide the world of single station cells up uh, inside the uh, confines of this book. Uh, this is, of course, an illustration we've seen before. So, single station cells are the most common manufacturing system in industry. Um, uh, they uh, state that uh, the operation is independent of other stations, uh, but of course uh, that is not necessarily true. They can be either for processing or assembly operations, and we can design them for single model production, batch, batch production, or mixed model production, my personal favorite. So a single station manned cell has one worker tending one uh, production machine. And this is the most common model that we see in business and industry. This is the most widely used production method, especially when we're talking job shop for batch production. Um, the reason is, first of all, it takes the shortest time to implement this kind of a cell. It requires the least capital investment is the easiest to install and operate. 
Uh, typically, this is for uh, this creates the lowest unit cost in a low production environment. And it's the most flexible when we're talking about product or part changeovers. So some examples of this would be a worker operating a standard machine tool. In that case, the worker loads and unloads the parts and operates the machine. The machine is manually operated in this uh, example. The second example is a worker operating a semi-automatic machine. The worker loads and unloads the parts and starts the semi-automatic work cycle. In this case, the worker's attention isn't needed continuously during the entire work cycle. And the third example is a worker using hand tools or portable power tools in one location. Some variations of the single station man cell are where we have two or more workers required to operate uh, the machine or machinery. Uh, an example would be two workers required to manipulate heavy forgings at a forge press or a welder and a fitter in an arc welding work cell. In that case, we have one principal production machine plus support equipment. Um, for an example, might be drying equipment for a manually operated injection molding machine or tripping shears at an impression die forge hammer so that we can trim flash from the forged part. Our third type is the single station automated cell. In this case, we have a fully automated production machine capable of operating unattended for longer than one work cycle. So workers are not required except for periodic tending. It could be important because our labor cost is reduced, although we must remember that it's always an economic decision whether to automate. This is the easiest uh, and least expensive automated system to implement. Our production rates are typically higher than in a manned cell. And this can be the first step in implementing an integrated multi-station automated system. Some things that we might need to enable an unattended cell operation. If we're producing identical parts or products, we have to have programmed operation for all steps in the work cycle. We have to have a parts storage system an automatic transfer of work parts between storage system and machine. We may need, uh, or do we need, uh, periodic attention of a worker or workers for removal of finished work units, resupply of starting work units, and other ki kinds of machine tending. And we have to have built-in safeguards uh, to avoid self-destructive operation or damage to work units. Uh, so some kind of autonomation, if you're familiar with that lean production term.
for cells that are designed for part and product and or product variety, we have to have all the preceding enablers plus we have to have work unit identification. Uh, automatic identification, uh, either barcodes or sensors that can recognize the features of starting units. If starting units are the same, our work unit identification is unnecessary. We have to have capability to download programs for each work unit style. Those programs, of course, have to be prepared in advance. And a capability for quick changeover of our physical setting. For our parts storage subsystem, and our automatic parts transfer, we have to have some necessary conditions for unattended operation. Given a capacity that is equal to NP parts in the storage subsystem, the cell can theoretically operate for a time defined by UT, uh, the unattended time of operation, equals the summation from K equals 1 to SC, that's our storage capacity, of our uh, cycle times of part K held in, in storage. The uh, reality, however, is the unattended time will be less than UT because our workers will need time to load finished parts and uh, unload finished parts and load raw work parts into the storage subsystem. When we talk about our parts storage capacity, our typical objectives um, in uh, defining our desired parts storage capacity, or SC, is to make our storage capacity cycle time a fixed time interval that allows one worker to, to attend multiple machines. Uh, often we see workers or unions want uh, to have one person per one machine, but that is not necessarily an efficient way to operate. We also want our storage capacity cycle time to be equal to the time between scheduled tool changes. If our store, uh, storage capacity cycle time uh, can equal one complete shift, that is fantastic, or make our storage capacity cycle time uh, an overnight uh, amount, or in other words, a lights out operation. Uh, at the end of the day, we leave the machine, it's working on its own, and it can work all night long. So we might have a storage capacity of one part. Uh, the example they use is the two position automatic pallet changer or APC. So 
if we have no pallet changer, our work cycle elements of loading and unloading and processing would have to be performed sequ sequentially, in which case our uh, cycle time will equal, equal our machine time and our worker service time. With the pallet changer, our work cycle elements can be performed simultaneously, so our cycle time becomes the maximum of either our machine time or our worker service time, plus our uh, repositioning time of the pallet changer. All right, so here is a an illustration of what that would look like, where we have an we have an indexing uh, automatic pallet changer. We have two pallets here. Uh, one is in position to be worked on by the machine. The other is sitting on the machine waiting to be unloaded uh, or worked on. Um, this is a four axis uh, CNC setup where we have the X direction, the Y direction, the Z direction, and the C direction is the axis of rotation of the, the pallet. All right, so where do we have storage capacities greater than one? One place is a machining center, where we have different kinds of part storage units that are interfaced to an automatic pallet changer or some other automated transfer mechanism. Uh, turning centers where we have some kind of industrial robot interface with parts carousel, uh, plastic molding or extrusion. Uh, the hopper contains enough molding compound so that our, our operation can be unattended. And sheet metal stamping where our starting material is a sheet of uh, coiled metal. Here we see a single station cell with a linear pallet system. Um, so we have a load unload station, we have pallets, um, we have a shuttle cart that can move the pallets to be loaded in the machine. Um, and uh, the beat goes on. We can have other designs of storage systems for multiple parts. In this case, a machining center and an automatic pallet changer with pallet holder, holders arranged radially. It has a part storage capacity of five. Okay, so we have uh, one pallet with a part being worked on uh, in the CNC machine center. And then we have five parts on pallets waiting. Uh, here we see a machining center and an inline shuttle cart system. Uh, it has uh, pallet holders along its length. Its part storage capacity is 16. Pardon me. Um, so the uh, a CNC machining center. Uh, uh, 
has a shuttle cart that can move the pallets to it, or the machining center itself moves. That's not actually clear from this illustration. But probably we're moving the part the pallets with the parts and not the machining center. Uh, here we have a uh, machining center with pallets on an indexing table with a part storage capacity of six. So we have the machining center table here. We have pallet holders and that can be moved around so that any one of the pallets can be loaded. Uh, here we see a, a machining center and a part storage carousel. The parts are loaded onto pallets. The part storage capacity is 12. And uh, this works much in the way of the others. So CNC machining centers and related machine tools uh, first of all, many of our single sta station automated cells are designed around CNC machine tools. So we have the different categories of machining centers, turning centers, mill turn centers, and multitasking machines. Our objective with this kind of a setup is to reduce the number of separate machines and setups uh, to process a given part as in um, A, where we have uh, an in setup run on machine one that is moved to setup on machine two run move to machine three, run, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas our object is to get down to, it goes in, it's set up on one machine, all the different uh, operations are carried out on that machine, and it's removed from the machine. So a CNC machining center is a machine tool that can perform multiple operations that use rotating tools on the work part with one setup under the CNC control. Typically those operations are things like milling, drilling, operations related to that. They're available with three, four, or five axes. And uh, typically, to, to reduce our non-productive time, we may have automated tool changers and tool storage unit, an automatic pallet changer, and an automatic pallet storage and handling system. Here we see a four-axis CNC horizontal machining center. Um, we actually saw this illustration earlier when we were talking about automatic pallet changers. When we're talking about horizontal machining center spindle control, we may have um, an A and B axis on top of the normal uh, X, Y, Z axis uh, to give the machine more flexibility. So uh, the 
uh, machine is able to move uh, the tool through 180 degrees here and is able to move the tool through a 360 degree rotation here. So our CNC turning center, this is a machine tool that can uh, perform multiple operations on a rotating work part in one setup under numerical computer control. So typically uh, operations are things like turning and related operations to that. Um, uh, for example, contour tour, turning, drilling and related operations along the work part axis of rotation. Uh, other advanced features that we might have, we might have work part gauging, tool monitoring for wear and tool life tracking, and automatic part changing. Here we see um, a typical CNC turning center. Uh, we have the control channel, the chuck, the workpiece is in, in the, truck, the chuck. We have a turret for the turning tools and we have a turret for drills, reamers, etc. Um, the sliding door is closed during operation, but we can look through the uh, window. We can have a CNC mill turning center. Um, so that is a machine tool capable of performing multiple operations with either single point turning tools or rotating cutters in one setup under numerical computer control. Um, typical operations, turning, milling, drilling, and related operations. An enabling feature on these, this type of machines is the capability to control the position of the C-axis in addition to the X and Z-axis control, but the turning center is limited to X and Z-axis control. All right, so the sequence of operations in a mill turn center for a sample part here, uh, we, see, uh, we see this, it has uh, cylindrical features and square features. Uh, the uh, uh, turning tool would uh, run it down to the outside diameter size. A milling cutter would come in and, uh, and mill the flat edges with a bit drill bit to drill the feature hole there. And then a cutoff tool would come and cut the um, uh, cut the uh, uh, part off the workpiece. We may have a multitasking machine. Uh, in the general configuration of a CNC machining center. Um, but a machining center performs milling and drilling operations. A CNC multitasking machine uh, performs all three basic operations, milling, drilling, and turning. 
Some other examples, we might have uh, other additive or subtractive processes. Uh, blue arc technology, in other words, high-speed high roughing of the part with uh, an electron beam or grinding and electro, uh, electron discharge machine. So, applications of a single station man cell. We might have a CNC machining center that has a worker to load and unload it. A CNC turning center with a worker to load and unload. A cluster of two CNC turning centers with time sharing of one worker to load and unload. Uh, plastic injection molding with a semi-automatic cycle with a worker to unload molding sprue and uh, runner. And one worker at an electronic subassembly workstation in inserting uh, components into a, a PCB. Oh, okay, right. Um, or a stamping press with a worker loading blanks and unloading stampings on each cycle. All right, so that's the case for man cells. For single station automated cells, we might have a CNC machining center with an automatic pallet, um, automatic uh, pallet uh, machine, and a parts storage subsystem, a CNC turning center with robot and parts storage carousel. We might have a cluster of 10 CNC turning centers each with ro uh, robots and parts storage carousel. Um, and the sharing of one worker to load and unload the carousels. Uh, plastic injection molding on an automatic cycle with a robot arm to unload molding, sprue, and runners. Electronics assembly station with automated insertion machine in um, inserting co uh, components into PCBs. And a stamping press stamps parts from a long coil. Here, for example, is an automated stamping press. Uh, the stamping press on an automatic cycle produces stampings from the sheet metal coil. So here's the coil stock. It feeds through a stock straightener, which goes into a, a roll feed. Uh, you have a punch which is punching out the, um, uh, the stamped uh, piece. Uh, trim die and scrap chopper. And then you have a parts container into which the uh, finally finished pieces go. Okay, sorry, try and get more oxygen in. <laughs> All right, and as usual, we remind you, this material is copyright. So don't even think about stealing it. All right, so um, now let us consider 
the um, uh, the uh, kind of problems that we would have to uh, be able to uh, do uh, for this type of work. say let's look at um, hmm. And there's a lot of steps to uh, using these things with uh, uh, Zoom. Uh, all right, so first of all, let's always save our work. Chapter 14, example. Problem fourteen dot two A machine shop operates a one eight hour shift five days per week. Each part processed on a CNC machine tool of interest has a pre programmed cycle of thirty seven minutes. At the end of each program cycle, a worker unloads and loads the machine, which takes five minutes. Thus, the total work cycle time is 42 minutes, and the worker is idle most of that cycle. The plant manager needs to increase the output and is considering three alternatives. One install an automatic pallet changer that would have a repositioning time of 30 seconds, which would increase output slightly. Two, purchase a second machine with no APC, which would double output um, slightly. Uh, wait. Or Oh, excuse me, or three, purchase an automated pallet storage and handling system with a storage capacity that is sufficient to allow the machine to operate overnight, that is for two shifts, which would approximately triple the output. The repositioning time between the storage system and the CNC machine is 30 seconds. The worker would unload and load the storage system at the beginning of the day shift and then be assigned other work until later in the shift when it would be time to load the storage system for overnight operation. Unloading and loading of the APC 
in one and and the storage system in three takes the same uh, six minutes per cycle because both involve pallets. Determine A, the output for each of the three alternatives, B, the storage capacity of the storage system in alternative three that would achieve overnight operation, and C, the amount of time the worker would be kept busy each day unloading and loading the storage system. A daunting task indeed. All right, maybe not that daunting. All right, as usual, I always start with the information that I'm given. Uh, we know that um, yes, the shift equals eight hours, um, although I'm tempted to put down uh, 480 minutes since we're going to be working in minutes most of the time. Um, we know that um, days per week equals five. Um, the um, Program cycle time is equal to 37 minutes. The load unload equals five minutes, right? Yes, five minutes. All right, the APC time equals 30 seconds. Um, all right. All right, well, first of all, I would say the first thing we have to do is we have to say how much um, theoretical capacity have we got uh, going on now. Right, so our original capacity is going to be Is going to be our um, well. Let's let's do it for one day, first of all. All right. So our uh, shift is 480 minutes. If we divide that. If 
we divide that by our uh, uh, cycle time plus our uh, time to load, unload, we'll get our daily capacity. You don't have to sound so dubious when you uh, say okay like that. All right, so that's equal to our 480 um, divided by our 37 plus 5. All right, so we can get 11.42, call it 43, units per day. Um, that is going to be equal to that times 5. units per week. All right, so our first alternative is um, install an automatic uh, pallet changer. If we do that, our capacity with the automatic pallet changer uses the same formula, but our time of loading and unloading uh, now becomes, and I'm just going to figure this in, uh, by the week, uh, 5 times 480 divided by our cycle time. Oh, what a mistake on my part. equals, all right, there we go, 5 times 480 divided by our cycle time plus our automatic pallet changing time, which is 30 seconds, but that has to be divided by 60 seconds per minute. for, boy, an even 64 units per week. All right, so essentially we gained seven units just uh, changing to that system. Uh, If we purchase a second machine, all right, so second machine, our capacity with the second machine equals well, if you think about it, it is just equal to our original units per week 
times 2. Right? So it equals units per week times 2. Bob's your uncle. Units per week. Now, uh, bu -bu -bu. Uh, purchase an automated pallet storage and handling system with a storage capacity that is sufficient to allow the machine to operate overnight two shifts, which would approximately triple the output. Uh, all right, and the repositioning time between storage system and CNC machine is 30 seconds. Uh, so, Our auto storage uh, capacity or ASC as I'm going to call it uh, is going to be equal to now, not five, but 15 shifts per week. So three times five times 480 minutes divided by our uh, 37 minutes plus our 30 seconds repositioning time, and of course that has to be divided by 60 to put it in minutes. And that would be units per week. Uh, so, there you go. All right. Our second, our B is what is the storage capacity of the storage system in alternative three for overnight operation. All right. So our storage capacity would have to equal, so it's equal to two shifts times 480 minutes divided by our 30 second, uh, 37 minutes plus our 30 seconds divided by 60 Um, which would be 25.6 units. Okay, yeah, mathematically that works out. Sorry, I was checking my, my logic there. Um,
Um, okay, well, um, and for part C, uh, barely. Uh, the amount of time the worker would be kept busy each day loading and unloading the storage system. Uh, okay, well, that would be Time unloading, loading, that would be equal to one and a half times our storage capacity unit. times our five minutes to load and unload. So that would be 192 minutes a day. And it's if you think about it, very symmetrical because with the automa uh, auto storage capacity, we're doing 192 units a week, uh, 192 minutes per day. All right, it actually doesn't matter that those are the same number. quickly look at my cheat sheet and make sure that I haven't totally lost my mind. And Um, all right, so it looks like in part B I went astray because they wanted me to add one and round up to 27 units. C, I went off the rails. Eight times sixty divided by thirty-seven. I see, equals divided by 60, 3.2 hours 
which is still lower than what they are saying here. Uh, they actually figured it as having to load in the morning uh, and the afternoon. Uh, where I just figured it all out at once. Uh, but they came out with 3.9 hours instead of 3.2. Okay, so, you know, I'll take that. So the, are there any questions? One thing to remember with um, problems of this type is we're making assumptions that the writers of the textbook um, has not made for one reason or another. Right, they're, uh, they're assuming that the, um, uh, in part B, for example, they assume that the part loaded in the machine, as uh, aside from the parts in the parts storage bin, is significant. And since they say you can't load 25.6 units, you have to load 26 units. They're working on that schema. Uh, all right, well, let me, let me look at So equals three times B three times twenty seven. Wow, what did I do that changed that so much? Let's see, B3 is the five minutes. All right, so three shifts times five minutes times 27. Oh. Times 1.5. Wow, when I figure it that way. Oh, oh, I see, I see. All right, now, now we're cooking with charcoal. All right, so let's figure it as um, in the morning has to load the 27 minutes times 5 minutes per day and then all right so that's T U L A N equals 
and then T U L P N equals all right equals zero point five times twenty seven times five hundred minutes per day. Oh, oh, they also say that it changes from five minutes to six minutes having to do this system. And then that one changes, that last one changes to what? Uh, when uh, we're figuring the loading unloading with the storage system, it goes from the five minutes we were using before to six minutes. All right, so that puts us in line with almost in line with what what they say here. Can you, uh, can you click on that cell for time to unload for the PM? For PM? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Oh, so we should stream test. Okay. Okay, got it. Alright, and, and the difference is They've used the assumption of time to load and unload in the morning is 14 times 6 minutes, and time to load and unload in the afternoon is 25 times 6. All right, so again, it always makes a lot of difference what our assumptions are about what has to be done. And uh, uh, I should have caught the part about loading and unloading being different for uh, uh, without the storage system and with the storage system. All right, so now that we've thoroughly trashed that problem, <laughs> Um, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> all right. This is a problem on a magnificent scale. Um, uh, problem 14.5. A machine shop must supply an automotive engine plant with machine components. The plant operates one eight-hour shift for 250 days per year and must annually produce 600,000 good quality parts of various designs in batch sizes of 5,000 parts to satisfy the plant's delivery schedule. Scrap rate is expected to be 3%. On average, it takes 2.5 minutes to produce each part when the automated production machines are running. Before each batch, the machine must be set up, and that takes 1.7 hours per setup. 
Availability of the machines is 97.5% during production and 100% during setup. Uh, how many automated production machines will be required to accomplish the specified production? Oh, holy tuxedos. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm almost... Uh, 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 sorry that I started this idea. All right, so a shift equals um, eight hours. A um, uh, the days per year equals two hundred and fifty. Um, a more typical number that we would count on would be 220 uh, days per year. Um, I mean, if you care. <laughs> uh, uh, our total quantity equals 600,000. Our batch quantity equals 5,000. Our scrap rate, scrap rate is 20%. Is 0 0.03, yes. Our um, uh, cycle time two is 2.5 minutes. Yeah. 2.5 minutes. Oops. Need to put that over in the next one or it's going to screw up the, the path. Um, uh, Time of setup is 1.75 hours, no, 1.7 1. hours. hours. The machine availability. Um, okay. Um, All right, time available while machining is 90, uh, is 0 0.975, and time available during production or setup? During okay. setup is 100%. Um, oh, not 1.9, though. That would be miraculous. Okay, you're right. And this should be production, not machining. Okay. Of course, we remember from um, uh, plant layout and design uh, that to get the uh, required number is equal uh, to uh, the uh, total required divided by one minus scrap rate. All right, so that equals 
are 600,000 divided by 1 minus scrap rate, close parenthesis. All right. And, oh man, I'm glad it came out to be such a nice, neat number. All right, so that implies that we would um, we're running in batches of five thousand, and it takes so our time for a batch is going to be equal. Uh, to our um, to our batch quantity to, oh, no, go away. I don't want filter keys. Divided by our time of setup plus our batch quantity times our cycle time. Oh, you know what? I've already made a mistake. Is batch quantity only enters in once and not there. Okay, so not at the front. All right. Now, because our, uh, our, our cycle time is in minutes, we are going to have to go backwards and divide by 60 so that it's all in hours. All right, so equals our setup time um, Setup time, oh, man, I thought of a whole new complication. <laughs> um, we'll just leave that for a second. Our setup time and our cycle time have to be divided by machine availability time. Now, of course, that's easy for time available during setup is one in that case, but down here we need to go and it would be the uh, uh, time available for production times 60. Okay. Oh, bloody hell. And I already need to move this over. Okay. So All right. All right. So um. our time of setup is divided by the availability, which is 100%. So that's a wash. Plus our batch quantity times our cycle time that is divided by 60 times our time availability all right
right, so it takes 215 and 3 eighths hours. Right, so time of setup divided by time available for setup. Of course, we could just put time of setup for that. Plus the batch size, batch quantity of 5,000 times the cycle time. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, but wait, no, scrap, not scrap rate. Um, oh, the uh, time of production. Right, time available for production. There we go. All right, there we go. What a relief. All right. Um, now, I would go ahead and... Um, uh, can we continue this on Wednesday? I got a class in about seven minutes. Just when it was getting flipped. <laughs> yeah, of course we can. Come on. Or if you finish it, I can look on Moodle and finish the notes. Um, let's uh, go ahead and uh, finish um, uh, next time. Because uh, there may still be strange convolutions in the system. All right, so next um, Wednesday. Yeah, it comes back to me now. Um, all right, I will save this. Okay, and that's it for today's class. We will pick up on problem 14.5 where we left off next Wednesday. He says, stating the obvious into the phone in his pocket. Oh, man. Uh, uh.